All right, so I am back with video two in this series. In this video, we're going to be talking about collision and handling pixel perfect collision, actually. Anyways, first thing I want to do is actually make it so our car can move backwards because, well, we didn't do that in the last video and I meant to show that. So let's do that now. So to move backwards is very easy. In fact, it's the exact same as moving forwards, except we just need to modify uh, the velocity and everything a little bit. So we're going to go and make another method here. And this is going to be called move backward. And inside of here, we're going to say self .vel is equal to the maximum of and this is going to be self velocity minus self acceleration. When we move backwards, we need to subtract the acceleration because we're trying to go in the opposite direction. So we want a negative velocity to be moving backwards because it's like the reverse gear in your car. You don't turn around to go backwards. You can just rotate the wheels in the other direction, which is what we're going to do here. And then this needs to be self max vel over two. I don't know why I deleted that. The idea of this is that we want sorry, this needs to be negative, is that we want the uh, maximum possible negative velocity to be half of the velocity going forward. The reverse gear in your car, you cannot go up to 100 miles per hour, right? You can only go a certain speed. There's a top speed in that. So same thing here. We're going to make it so when you go in reverse, you are going slower than when you are going forward. Uh, I don't know why that's super important, but that's what we're doing. So self dot velocity minus self dot acceleration and then negative self dot max velocity over two, just splitting that in half. I think that's pretty self explanatory. Let's now make it so we have a uh, key that does that. So we're just going to copy this and I'm just going to change this now to key. This is going to be S. S will go backwards and then we will change this to be backward like that. Notice I have moved equals true. We need that to make sure we don't reduce our speed as we are going backwards. Perfect. Now that we have that, let's run the code and let's check if the reverse gear works. So now I can move backwards and notice I cannot go backwards at the same speed that I can go forwards, right? I can go at half the speed. Great. There you go. Backwards is working. If you try to turn when you're going backwards, you'll notice that the turning works and you actually should be turning in the inverse direction, which is correct. And that's why we set up all this stuff so that it just works when we add other things in the future. Great. So what I want to do is just clean up the code a little bit here. I want to take all of this stuff. So keys moved all of the stuff related to moving my uh, player. And I want to make a function here and I'm going to call this move underscore player. Now inside of here, uh, we will just take the player car. So we'll say player underscore car like that. And then we can perform all of this stuff simply using player car. OK, so again, just trying to clean this up. So now inside of here, I'm going to say move underscore player and I'm going to pass my player car and this will handle all of the movement. Let me just get rid of that. Let's run this and let's make sure it's still working. And it is. We are all good. OK, one more small refactor I want to do is I just want to go and grab this reduce speed method here and put this inside of my car class. Reason being that my computer, which is going to inherit from this abstract car class as well, does not need to be able to reduce its speed. It's going to be the same speed the whole time. And so it makes sense to have this in the class where it's actually going to be used because it's not going to be used by anything else that implements the abstract car class. Uh, you could leave it in there. There's arguments for both, but I am just going to move it here. Great. So everything will continue to work. We don't need to test that. Moving forward, though, the next thing I want to do is collision. So this is where we need to talk about masks and we need to talk about how you actually handle collision of different objects in Python. So what I'm going to do is open up paint here and we're going to start talking about masks. All right. So I'm inside of paint here and I'm going to explain to you masks and how we do pixel perfect collision. So let's start with traditional collision and then we can explain pixel perfect collision. So let's say we have some object and let's just make it a circle for simplicity. Now, remember, I told you that every single surface in Pi game is really a rectangle. So even if this is all that we're showing, we actually have a rectangle around this circle here. So we might not see the rectangle. And the reason we wouldn't see it is because all of these pixels here would be transparent pixels. So they wouldn't show up on the screen, but they're still there. It's still a rectangle. So let's say we have another image and let's just do it like this. And maybe inside of here, I don't know, we have some green, whatever. OK, this is what this image looks like. Point being is that these two rectangles, the rectangles containing these two images are overlapping. This is the overlapping area right here. However, if we're looking at these two images, remove the rectangles, they're not colliding with each other, right? The pixels that are present in both of the, these images are not touching each other. But if we were to use traditional collision, which is just rectangular collision, you just check if two rectangles are lying inside of each other, then it would say, 
that these two objects are colliding. And this is the overlapping area. But again, the pixels in the images are not actually colliding. So how do we fix this? Because I don't want it to show me that two objects are colliding unless the pixels on the screen actually look like they are colliding. This is where we use something known as a mask. Now, what a mask is, is an array of values representing whether or not a pixel in an image is transparent or present, whether it just exists. It's not a transparent pixel. Now, the point of a mask is that rather than performing rectangular collision like this, we can simply check if pixels that are not transparent are overlapping into rectangular regions. So let's clear all of this. And now let's look at an example of a mask. Let's say we have a very simple image. OK, I'm going to just go with a rectangle because it's easier here. And we have maybe something like this. OK, we have pixels all in here, pixels all in here. And then inside of the other two regions is transparent. OK, and now we have another image. And let's just do something like this. And maybe we only have pixels inside of this bottom left hand corner. Well, the mask for these two images would look like this. It's just going to be an array. So we'd have a large array. It's going to be a two dimensional array. And we would have one comma zero. OK, and again, excuse me, I'm using the mouse here. And then zero comma one like that. Now, for this image, it would be similar, but we're going to have nothing in the first row because we have no non transparent pixels. And then we would go here and we would have zero comma one like that. OK. Now, let's imagine these masks are directly on top of each other. The two objects are completely on top of each other. Then what we would do is we would just compare values in these arrays and see if two ones are at the same position, right? So we check here. So, OK, there's no one here. So we're not colliding in this region. OK, then we go here. So, OK, there's no ones there. So we're not colliding there. We go here. OK, no ones. We're not colliding. And boom, we find two ones, which means we're colliding in this region right here. And so we would say, OK, yes, we are colliding because two pixels that are not transparent are touching each other. There you go. Perfect. That's all you need to know. However, it gets a little bit more complicated because we need to know the location of both of these masks before we can do this comparison. In the example I just showed you, we just imagine they were on top of each other. So if I select this and I grab it, it's going to be a bit rough, but we imagine this mask was right on top of the other one. And in that case, it was really easy to check if they were colliding. But what if the mask is sitting somewhere like this or sitting here or sitting up here? Well, we need to know that. And that's known as the offset. So we have something and actually let's make a new file here. We have something known as our calling mask and then I guess the mask that it's being called on. So let's say that this here is our calling mask. And then this is the mask that this mask is being called on. Well, we need to determine the difference between the top left hand coordinates so that we can overlap these masks in the appropriate region to determine if pixels are colliding. So I want to calculate the displacement in X and the displacement in Y. So then I know the total displacement and then I can align these masks properly before I do the collision. So if this is my calling mask, and this is the mask that I want to find the offset on. Well, I just need to find that. I'll show you how we do that in code. And then that's one of the values that we need to pass to kind of our mask collision function so that we can overlap these masks in the correct area. All right, that's my explanation of masks. Hopefully that was good enough for you. Now we are going to actually do this. First thing we need to do, though, is create masks. So, so to do this, we're going to say track underscore border underscore mask. Now, this is the whole point of having this track border is that we're going to use this border. Let's go to it quickly here as our mask. This will be one mask and then we will compare this to the car, our player car, and we will see if these two masks are colliding with each other. And this is actually really easy to use because its corner is zero zero, right? Its top position is zero zero, which actually just makes it way simpler for us to do the offset calculation. So I'm not going to do scale image. I'm going to do pi game dot. And this is going to be mask dot from underscore surface. And we're just going to pass in here the surface we want the mask of, which is our track board. Easy enough. That's how you get a mask. OK, so we have that mask. Now what I want to do is make a method inside of my abstract car class. It will go inside of abstract car because this is going to be for both the computer and my player. And I will call this collide. Now we're going to take in self mask x equals zero and y equals zero with the point being we are going to pass some other mask here. We'll generate a mask for our own image. We will then have the x and the y of the other mask. We obviously already have the x and the y of the car. We will determine if two masks are colliding in here. 
So I'm going to start by saying car underscore mask is equal to pygame dot mask dot from underscore surface. And this will be self dot IMG. So whatever image we're using for this car, then we are going to calculate the offset. Now the offset needs to be integer values. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to say int int like this. And the reason we need that is because we could get some floating value when we do the subtraction. But we need to calculate the offset X and the offset Y. Now the offset is relative to the calling mask. In this case, we're going to say, I guess, collision or we'll actually go with POI, which stands for point of intersection is equal to. And then this will be mask dot. And I believe this is called overlap of the car mask with the offset. So we're going to use the other mask as the calling mask, which is going to dictate how we calculate the overlap. If we did it the other way, we need to flip the over or the not the overlap, the offset. Sorry. OK, inside of int, I'm going to say we're going to go with X minus self dot X and Y minus self dot Y. Or is the other way around? Let's see. Of course, I've done it incorrectly. It's going to be the other way around. It's going to be self dot X minus X and self dot Y minus Y. OK, so the reason why we're using this as our offset again is because the calling mask is the other mask that we're passing. So we're going to take whatever our current X position is and whatever our current Y position is, and we're going to subtract that from the X and the Y of the other mask. Now that will give us the displacement between the two masks. If we did this the other way around, that'd be fine. But we would then have to swap this and say the car mask is calling the uh, the other mask. OK, so that's how that would work. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. The reason we're converting this into again is because we need integer values for the offset. We cannot have floating points and our self dot X and self dot Y uh, can be floating point values. OK, so now that we have that, this is going to return to us the point of intersection between these two masks if there is one. Now, we don't actually care what that point is, at least not right now. We're just going to return the POI. Now, what we can do to determine if two objects have, have collided is we can see if the POI is equal to none or not. If there is no POI, the two objects didn't collide. If there was a POI, then they did collide. So now we have collide. So I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to check for this collision. So I'm going to say if and we're going to go car underscore player dot collide. And we're going to do this with what mask was it? This was going to be the track border mask. And notice that I don't actually need to pass an, an X and a Y here because the track border is positioned at zero zero. Now we actually haven't even drawn the track border, but that's fine because we don't need to. We don't need to draw the track border right now because we just know that it's going to be at the exact same position as where our current track is on the screen because the track border and the track are the exact same size. They're pretty much the same image, except one is just the border. The other is not. So we don't need to draw it, but we can still use the mask and we know its location is going to be zero zero. OK, so we have that if player uh, underscore car dot collide track border, we can say does not equal none there. Then what we can do right now is we can just print collide. And that way, it's really easy for us to see if we actually have collided. We can just look in our console and see if, well, we had a collide. So let's run this and uh, pygame.surface object has no attribute overlap. OK, let me go here. Uh, OK, car mask, pygame.mask surface, mask.overlap. Ah, I realized what I did here. I passed the track border when I meant to pass the track border mask. OK, so make sure you've actually passed the mask. That was the point of creating it. Let's run this now. And OK, we're all good. So now watch what happens when I go into the wall. Notice I get a bunch of collisions. And then when I get off the wall, it stops for a second. And if I go back to the wall, it continues printing collide. Now you can't really see it because it's, my whole console is filled with collide. But let's quit this and clear and run again. And I'll show you. Let's turn and let's go here. And then we get a bunch of collides as soon as we hit the wall. OK, so that is the idea behind the collision. That's really all you need to know for calculating collision. Now that we have done that, we need to do something when we hit the wall. We can't let our car drive through the wall. 
So what I'm going to implement now is a bounce. So if you hit the wall, you're going to bounce off the wall with the same velocity that you hit the wall with. Right. I guess uh, we could go into the laws of uh, physics, laws of physics, laws of motion, maybe is what it's called. Uh, if you hit something with a certain velocity, then you're going to go back in that same direction. Right. Just like when you throw a ball off of a wall, it comes back and you're going to lose a bit of velocity. But point being, you know, law of physics, I want to explain more than that. So inside of my player car, I'm going to implement a method which is going to be bounce. I'm going to say define bounce self. Now, all I need to do inside of bounce is I just need to reverse the velocity. So I'm going to say self dot vel is equal to negative self dot vel. Now, this will work if we're going backwards or forwards, because if we're going backwards, the velocity is already negative. So this will then make it positive. So we go forward. And if the velocity is positive, then it just makes it negative, right? And then, of course, we'll just say self dot move so that we start moving as soon as we reverse the velocity. So now all we need to do is here say self dot bounce. And now if we hit a wall, we just bounce. And sorry, this is not self this is going to be player underscore car. So if we hit a wall, if we collide, we just bounce backwards and we'll go in the same. Well, actually, the complete opposite direction as the one that we hit the wall. at. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 160 coding interview questions in many different categories. They have heaps, they have arrays, they have linked lists, everything that you could imagine and that you need to prepare for your software engineering interviews is available at Algo Expert. Check them out from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. OK, so now that we have that, let's run the code and see if this is working. And let's try it out. And notice that I am bouncing off the walls. There you go. That is what I would expect. Now, this is a little bit glitchy. I won't lie. This isn't always going to work perfectly every single time. And you'll notice that sometimes you will kind of hit a wall, even though you don't really see a wall. That's just because my image is kind of messed up a little bit <laughs> the way that I had it. And so you might be hitting some pixels that you can't actually really see. Anyways, this is working good enough for me. I'm, I'm happy with the bounce. And so we're going to move on to the next thing. OK, so we have now handled the collision with our walls. And you'll actually notice now that you can't go outside of those bounds because, well, you just can't. Right. If you hit any of the walls then you're going to bounce back inside. So now we need to make it so that you can hit the finish line. Right. So let's start drawing the finish line on the screen. Let's handle collision with the finish line. But you'll notice that this is a little bit trickier than it seems because we have to know what direction we cross the finish line from. Because if the finish line is where we start, right, kind of starting line, finish line, if we just drive directly backwards, we can't say that we've won the race. We have to hit it from the other direction. So we have to handle that. OK, let's go here, though. We have finish. Now, let me see if I need to scale this uh, rather than just messing around with it. Let's see if I did scale it in my uh, my code previously. Looks like I did not scale it. So that's good. We can just leave it where it is. But I do need to determine the position of the finish line. So I'm going to say finish underscore position is equal to and I've already figured this out for you is going to be 130 and 250. So now let's just draw this in that position and let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to my images here and I'm going to add that as one of the images. So I'm going to say finish. I'm going to draw this at the finish uh, underscore position like that. So now let's run the code and let's see what we get. Notice the finish line is right here. All right. So there you go. The finish line is up. Now, this looks fine. However, we can see it is kind of overlapping with our track. So what I'm going to do is just draw the track border over top of this. So that way we get rid of any of these edges that are being cut off. So this is kind of a neat solution that we can go with here. But what I'm going to do is just add inside of my images here and make sure you do it after the finish line, by the way. Otherwise, it won't go over top of the finish line. I'm going to say track underscore border. And we'll just draw this at uh, position zero, zero, uh, not zero M zero, zero. Make sure we add our last bracket there and let's run this now. And parentheses does not match. Did I mess something up? OK, that looks good. All right. So now let's see this and notice that now the finish line is no longer overlapping. The reason for that is it is actually overlapping, but we're just drawing over top of it just the track border. So that way everything looks good. And then there you go. Our car is now moving around. Let's see if we bounce and we do sweet. OK, so that is good. Now that we have done that, we want to handle colliding with the finish line. So now we're going to do another thing down here. We're going to say if player underscore car 
dot collide. And now we need to get a, uh, uh, sorry, what is this? A mask for the finish line. So let's generate a mask for the finish line. We'll do that from up here. Where is the finish line? Right here. Okay. We're going to say finish underscore mask is equal to pygame dot mask dot from surface and then finish. Okay. We now have the finish mask. So now we're going to say player card dot collide. We're going to go with finish underscore mask. And then we need to pass the finish position, but with an asterisk. What this does is split the tuple that is storing this position, so x and y, into two individual coordinates and passes this to the uh, the function as two arguments. So if you do asterisk finish position, this is the same as passing 130 and 250. Okay, they're identical, but I figured I would show this to you because it's interesting Python syntax. Anyways, we're going to say again, if that is not equal to a none, then what we want to do now is just print finish. Okay. So now let's see if we can check for collision with the finish line. So I'm just going to go backwards and notice we get a bunch of finishes. And then if I go up here, we get finishes again. So the thing is, as I was saying, we don't want to be able to just drive backwards and say, oh yeah, you finished. In fact, if we drive backwards, we don't want to be able to go past the finish line. We should only be able to go forward on the track. We shouldn't be able to go backwards and cross the finish line. So this is where I'm actually going to use the point of intersection to determine what direction I hit the finish line from. So rather than just printing finish here, I'm actually going to store this and I'm going to say finish POI collide. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Finish point of interest collide is equal to that. And then instead of all this, we'll just say finish POI collide and we will print out the finish POI collide. OK, so let's run this. And now let's go backwards and notice that we get a bunch of zeros as we're going backwards, right? So if I keep going back here, let's go back, back, back. Let's just go slow here. Notice all of these are zero, 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 zero. OK. And then as soon as I guess the top of my car kind of gets to the middle of the finish line here, we get some actual values for the Y coordinate. So what we can do is we can just check if the Y coordinate of the point of intersection is zero. And if it's zero, that means we hit it from the top. So coming down, if it's not, that means we hit it from the bottom and we actually finished, meaning we went all the way around the track. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to say if the finished POI collide at index one is equal to zero, then car dot bounce. So just like when we hit the wall, this is actually going to be player car dot bounce. We're just going to bounce, meaning we're going to bounce ourselves kind of up, I guess, if we're going backwards, trying to hit the finish line. Let's run this. Notice when I go backwards now, I bounce forwards because I'm trying to cross the finish line from the wrong direction. Now, let's go all the way around and this will take a second here. But let's see if we bounce when we go from the other direction. <laughs> OK, we got to slowly make our way through the track. We can just test my driving skills here while I try to fill in the silence because there's nothing to talk about. OK, looks good so far. Maybe we need to increase the speed of this car for debugging because this this could take a, <laughs> a long time if I leave it at the speed of four. OK, almost there. Last two bends here. All right, coming around and notice we only bounce when we hit the top of the finish line, right? Like I can go onto the finish line like that. It's only when I get to the top that I'm actually bouncing. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now we can just implement what happens if we cross the finish line from the correct direction. So I'm just going to put in else here because if we collided with the finish line, but our Y coordinate was not zero, that means we actually finished. So in this case, we will just print finish and I'll actually implement kind of the finish behavior in the next video. But for now, we can add a few more methods to our cars. So I'm going to go to my abstract car class here and I'm just going to define another method. I'm going to call this reset. Now, what this is going to do is reset our car position. So kind of preparing for the next level, right? So all we'll do is we'll say self dot X self dot Y is equal to self dot start underscore position. We then need to reset the angle. So self dot angle is equal to zero. We need to say self dot velocity is equal to zero as well. And then is there anything else that we need to reset? Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. Rotation velocity, max velocity. Nope, that looks good to me. Uh, we can just do that. OK, so now 
How about we say that if we cross the finish, we'll reset the car. We'll set player underscore car dot reset. I'm just going to increase the speed of my car. So let's make this a speed of eight and we'll go with rotational velocity of eight as well, just so that we can turn at the same speed we can move forward. And let's run this and let's see if we go any faster. OK, so we can indeed go faster, but we do have to wait to accelerate. And oh, gosh, that's a crazy bounce. OK, maybe we should make the bounce a little less harsh and maybe the lower speed was was better. Oh, my gosh. OK. All right. All right. Let's uh, try to get around this bend here. OK, yeah, so I think the speed of eight maybe is is too fast. Uh, we also could just try spawning the car right before the finish line. That, that would probably be easier, too. But you guys can just watch me struggle here. OK, let's go. And you're noticing that sometimes we're hitting like a wall that's not actually there again, kind of unavoidable. But as you saw there, as I hit the finish line, we spawned on top of the finish line. We reset the car and everything was good. Great. So with that, that pretty much covers everything I need to go through in this video. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show you, but I think for now that is fine. In the next video, we're going to implement the computer car, right? So the computer car moving around. And as I said in the last video, we'll do all of the kind of logic of starting the different levels, moving the speed of the computer car faster, uh, you know, that nice fancy text on the screen and really making the game an actual playable game. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one. Thank you.